So, hello everyone and welcome back to the GFG Purity Street Code Day 158. So, before starting the question, if you are new to this channel, please like, share and subscribe so that we can learn, maintain and grow our streak together. Let us jump to the question. So, the question name is Shy Geek and there are no tags available as of now. Okay. So, it's a medium category question and let's read the questions. If you have already read it, it's well and good. If you are able to solve it, then it's more good. But let us see what the question says and we will solve it together. So Geek wants to buy some chocolates from a nearby shop with K-Coins. So there is a Greek Geek, uh, he, he needs to buy a chocolate but he has only K-Coins in his pocket. He found that the shop contains N chocolates which are arranged in sorted order. The chocolates are arranged in increasing order of the prices. Now Geek wants to taste the costly chocolates. So he decided he will buy the costly chocolate. Uh, of course, he, uh, he, he must have the coins to afford the costly chocolate. Till there exists at least one type of chocolate he can afford. Okay, so you may assume there are infinite supply of chocolates in the shop geek visited. As a site is a geek is a shy person and he will inquire about the prices for at most 50 times of the shop, shopkeeper. You have to find the minimum number of chocolates. Okay. So let us see how the dry run is run. So we have this this three is indicating that you have three chocolates prices uh, uh, presented in increasing order and geek have only five coins, right? And the first constraint is that he wants to uh, uh, taste the costliest one, considering that he has a, he has that much amount of time to buy it. So the costliest one is things, but he has only the coins to buy uh, five, right? So the costliest one, according to his affordable uh, capacity, will be four, right? So and since this is an infinite supply, but he can only buy one instance of this chocolate, right? So five minus four will be you will be remaining with one chocolate, and then. Uh, the remaining amount can buy no other chocolates, right? Let's let's see for the second uh, test case. Let's drive in for the second test case at how the input and output are coming, right? So the geek has nine coins. We have four four uh, prices of the chocolate increasing order one to three and four. Clearly, you can see that the cost list is four, and you, and the geek can buy two instances of it, right? So I can I can and how many instances it can buy? I can just directly do the number of coins divided by the price of the cost price of the chocolate right so you, you can see that you can buy two instances of chocolate right and how many uh, coins it has now is remaining i can directly do it by n modulo 4 which will give me one right you can clearly see as well it can buy two instances that is four cross two that is eight if you do nine one side it will give you one which can be done in o of one using this these two operators that is division and remainder right so you have the remaining coin as one and you can see there is one, only uh, there is one instances uh, which has the price as one and you can buy this one so it, it will be that you uh, you uh, you bought this chocolate twice and you bought this chocolate once so the total number of the chocolates the geek bought is three right that's what you have to return and okay and since the uh, since the array elements are in increasing order and what I am doing is that I am finding the costliest chocolate which he can afford right so definitely I'm doing a searching so so in totality I'm doing a searching in sorted array right so what should be clicked then it should be clicked that we have to make a binary search right how the binary search will work here that let's say let me write the again so you have the array elements as one two three and four and you need to search for nine right so what will happen what will happen that it will search for 9 in 0 to this uh, uh, L equals to 0 to H equals to N minus 1 right it will go at midpoint that is it it will come here and it will see that if my current current uh, price uh, how, how it's responding if it is greater than K or less than K you can see clearly see that the target to be found is greater than the mid element right so definitely we have to search in the then the right hand side because right hand side would be having the greater elements right then we search then now in the second in the second search low has been shifted to mid plus one that is here and then high is here right and you, then you have to search in three to four again the mid will be pointed to this point and three and nine will be compared so definitely uh, uh, the coins is still greater than our mid element so we have to found a more larger element right so definitely we will do we will do one uh, shift again now we'll search in in this element that is l will be pointing to the four itself right h will be pointing to the four this last index as well and then uh, if you find the mid it will be pointing to the same index right so that is l equals to h equals to m equals to 3 right and now you can see there is 4 and your uh, coins is 9 but if you do 
uh so it's still it's still greater than so again the code will do l equals to mid plus one but you can see then you will go out of bound right right and uh, and you can see that if you do l equals to mid plus one then it will it will the l will go it go to the index of four and high is then three so that means you need to run a for loop that till well l is less equals to high then only you have to run that's the standard binary search right so let us do this thing and once we are at this index at this index you can see the high is representing this index right so at last we just have to do we will maintain just one answer that is answer plus equals to nothing but k by k by the uh, array of array of high right and the k will be updated to nothing but k modulo of array of high right and this and this entire code will run while our k is greater than zero right for each and every k uh, if it is greater than zero we'll run a binary search again and again right and we you have to again in initialize the l as zero right because uh, to do a binary search in the uh, whole array the l should be pointing to zero and h uh, in the uh, in the starting of the code l equals to zero h equals to n minus one and in for the rest of the part we have to analyze l equals to zero but not h to n minus one because we can clearly see that for the next iteration the search you will made will be clearly will be less than the previous high you have made in your iterations right so let us see the let us continue the dry run as well now so in the second in the second part the remaining k would be what one so you have to search for one in this in this array that is one two three and four and what i said that you have to initialize the l equals to zero and a high will remain the same that is as what it was initially pointing at right because you can clearly see that earlier you used to found four and now you need to find one right so no need to initialize high equals to n minus one again it will automatically be handled right for all the cases so h is again three and what will happen the again binary search will run so the first mid will be pointing to here and you can see that two and one so i need a the target element that to be found is less than the mid so definitely you have to search in this bar right so what will happen h is equals to mid minus one so at this point in the second in the second iteration of finding one so l will be updated to here as zero uh, it, it will be there as well and h equals to zero and then mid will also be here because mid is nothing but h plus l by two right and now you found the one element and then you again update your answer as answer plus equals to initially the answer was uh, previously the answer was two it will be updated as one by the array of h the array of h that is the array of zero that is one and it will give you the answer as three and k will be nothing but k modulo of array of h and k previously was updated to one it will be modulo with one and it will give you zero and now our entire code will stop here because the k has become equals equals to zero i hope you were able to get the enough intuition enough logic to how this problem is solved. so it's basic problem or let's say a variation of binary search algorithm right so i highly recommend you to pause this video and code this approach yourself but yes i have solved this question and you will get an error you are, if you are able to code this solution you will get an error error for the larger test cases right so i will tell you how to handle that but yes uh, please pause this video and try to code this thing yourself and then we will proceed ahead okay so since this is a very mm, what to say a uh, very basic code of binary search so i will not show you the live coding let me stop the video now pause the video now and i will do it for you so that's the code here i have explained you each and every point we initialize for l equals to 0 h equals to n minus 1 and then we have to run a for loop for k greater than equals to zero and inside it the nested uh, binary search will run that's how it's happening right we get a midpoint we get what is the array what is the price of the chocolate at this point using temp is equals to shop dot get of mid why shop dot get because they have made a class something right and in the in that class if you see the inbuilt code that they have passed the static list integer right so this is actually containing the list of the prices and you have a get method and that uh, greater than 50 thing is already handled so we do not need to handle this in our code right that is already handled and using this get method you are able to retrieve the actual what is the cost for that particular index right that's what they have written here as well okay so that's how we are retrieving it and the, the target to be searched if it is greater than the mid element then definitely we have to search in the right hand side that will be l equals to mid plus one else we have to search in the uh, left hand side so that will be h equals to mid minus one and what is this case if h equals to one we have to break i have already explained you these two cases let me explain you how this is working right so this is the case where 
the element that to be searched is itself not present. So let's say you have this thing 4, 1 and you need to search in the array of let's say 2, 3 and 4, right? So this will be L and this will be H and mid will be coming here, right? And you can see that this, the target value is 1 which is to be found is less than the mid event. So definitely you will search in this array, right? So now the L will be pointing to here as well as the H would also be pointing to here as it will be updated as mid minus 1. So it will be 0, it will be 0. And you will see that the mid is, mid is also equals to 0 and the element is pointing to 2. But then again, the search you have to made for 1 which is again less than the mid element. So you will move further. So moving further will just say that h is equals to mid minus 1. And you will do it 0 minus 1 that gives you minus 1, right? So in that case, I have handled that if h is equals, equals to minus 1, then, then that indicates that the element that you have found, you are finding it is not present in your array. So in that case, you don't have to do anything, just break it from there, right? You don't have any answer for that particular search. So that's what is happening here. And I've explained you both the, both the these two cases, how it's getting handled. So let us uh, compile and run and then we'll submit the solution. So before that, what is the time complexity? Definitely this while loop, this binary search is taking log n. Can you comment something on this while loop? I will say that this is taking a constant time. Why? Because you can clearly see that the k, whatever be the size of k, it, it's, it's 10 per 12, right? So it is decreasing with the highest value in your sorted array, right? Right. So the max complexity, let's say that it's 10 power 12 and the array is given you as 1, 2 and 3, right? So it will be, uh, it would be the max complexity will be log a with base 3, right? But that would be for a case where this is the smallest and k is the largest, right? If you consider an average case where this is also uh, in a range uh, from, it's, it's given 0 to 10 per 12, right? So we are considering that uh, both these, the last value and these values are almost very close, right? And that is why I'm saying that that time <coughs> considered may be as constant, right? But then again, if you can, if you want to write it in a, a manner, then again, it would be log of k with, yes, it will be log of k, right? Okay, okay. But log of k will again be a constant time. So overall time of of the code would be log n. So if I hit the submit button, so let us see, verify. And n is nothing but it's showing as, what's the constraint for n? It is as 10 power 5. So definitely log of n will be good, less than 10 power 8 and it should get submitted. But, but it has shown some error. As I told you that it will show you some error for the larger test case. And I also wasted much of my time to just rectify that how this thing is uh, getting handled. But then I have to refer to the uh, hints in the comments section or in the discussion section and I and I got to know that uh, That whenever you are doing this thing that shop dot get off mid right so I don't know maybe maybe that there there are uh, some accessing over over accessing time doing this because Because you have made this list as integer right and it's a, like a class where the several things are happening, right? so instead Instead, if I would have made a data structure where would I can get this shop dot uh, where I would can get this thing happen in O of one, like exactly O of one, will be extra times many lagnachi, right? So I can do two cases, right? One is that I can either maintain a array or array list of long, right, of size n, and then I iterate it over this shop and I store that elements in my array list. But that would be like that you are implementing an array for zero array or array list for zero to n right and there would be some entries that may not be getting used right suppose for the case you have n equals uh, for k equals to nine and you just have one two and three right so you can clearly see that you can buy three instances of this chocolate and this two and one will never get used right so instead we can just make a data structure which will have the entries only required entries right so definitely for for that thing we can we can use a map and we can access anything in O of 1, right? So whenever the entry is getting accessed, whenever the entry is getting accessed, so we will store it in a map to get to, a, to, to access it in our future use, right? So what I'm saying is that let us make a map here, right? The logic is very simple for this question, yeah. The only thing is that we are facing an extra head to uh, code this solution, right? just for this longer, larger test cases to pass. So we will make a map here, right? And instead of uh, uh, storing this temp into shop.getofmid, we will not do that. Instead, we will first check that if, that if 
entry if this entry is present in our map so like what i can say that if hm dot contains key so let me pause the video and code that step it's a very basic step and an easy hmm that's what i have done here i have made a map right and before i am initializing the temp to the mid index of our given shop class which is actually consisting the array elements uh, it is actually consisting the elements of uh, the increasing price what i am doing is that i am i am first checking that if it is contained in my map then well and good access it from map using o of 1 there should be nothing uh, overhead or maybe nothing should happen for the larger test case what uh, how much larger uh, uh, we have large like uh, we have this made as long and it will access in o of one so if it's there in map access it else if it's not there then the just for the first time access it from the shop dot get of mid you can access from that class and once you access from the shop put that thing put that element in your map for the future access if it if at all may required right right so for this count again we will not access from the shop but instead we will access from the map Again, I'm repeating, you could have used array as well, array or array list for storing these things. But then again, as I already explained to you, there will be several, uh, there will be several uh, indexes element which may not be used in your answer, suppose for this test case, right? So that's why we are using a map here that is more viable or more efficient to use, right? That is it. Let us compile and run. Again, the time complexity will be O of uh, log n. But since we are storing some elements which is actually just required, right? So the space complexity will not be O of n, but again, log n, right? Why log n? Because binary search is taking log n for the elements which are to be searched, right? So we are just storing some particular amount of, we are just accessing some particular amount of elements whenever we have the use for this case. For n equals to nine, we just went for three and we can see that only three, uh, only we can buy this uh, uh, three instances of this chocolate and it's over, right? So that is why we are saying that the average space complexity will be log n. Right, let us hit the submit button and we will see for ourselves. Mm. Yes, it's done. And again, I'm repeating that I have actually wasted a lot of time just to identify that uh, uh, why we have to use in this extra data, extra data section, right? So, so let's suppose this shop thing was not maintained in this question then definitely we would have done this without using this space complexity right so and that is why the reason yaar kuch samay samay bol raha hu ki ab ye efficient nahi lag raha hai the content making on qt right because it's very good to solve a random question from the entire dsa each and every day but then again from from a week i'm not feeling uh, i'm not getting a good vibe so let's see let's see what we do in the future and uh, and I have also updated my trees playlist. I have recorded two videos today. So I will update it by the end of today. The first is for the intro of the trees that uh, what is tree, how it is built application. Then second is for level order traversal. I'm solving that DSA 450, 450 sheet. I already solved it during my placement process. But yeah, I'm, uh, uh, this time I'm uploading in, the, in my YouTube channel as well so that uh, we all can uh, get uh, 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 maybe benefit uh, from that right okay so let us end this video and we'll meet again for 159 i guess and till then keep learning keep growing bye bye and take care and the last thing that i'm not uh, this uh, for uh, this day i'm not providing the c++ code i will i highly mm, encourage you uh, c++ users to uh, maybe uh, get the help of this code or maybe any one of you who, who code in c++ please i request you maybe uh, to provide the C++ code in the section as well so that so that it can be used for others, right? Because uh, it's the time constraint that I'm not I have not updated that right. So I'm just asking you So, okay, let's meet tomorrow till then. Bye. Bye. Keep growing and take care. Bye. Bye